I haven't uploaded a video in a while because I've been taking a well-earned break from Destiny 2. I've been farming Trials of Osiris since August last year for a PvE god roll cataphract with spike grenades, envious assassin and bait and switch because it's the best GL in the game. It took seven resets for my first envious bait and switch, <gasps> but sadly no. no spike grenades for bonus damage, so I kept going. <laughs> 18 and a half resets last season. Oh! And some more this season. Until just a few weeks ago, after 21 total trials resets and around 400 cataphracts, I got my second ever envious bait and switch, but this time, thankfully, with spike grenades. Yes! Oh my god! this game until June, man. We're playing something fun. I can't even remember what the masterwork was. I don't care, even if it's Blast Radius, I don't care. All right, I have my super, but I kind of want to save it for... Oh, look, there we go. Oh God, I died. But was it worth all that time and effort in PvP to get it? Fair dues. Heavy GLs have rarely been meta due to the lack of bosses with short damage windows favoring burst damage but I've always liked GLs and their potential in certain encounters. So when Warlord's Ruin featured two out of the three bosses with short damage windows, I was glad I had a Cataphract on hand for my solo run, even if the one I had at the time didn't have spikes. But the spike grenades bonus is really significant. It increases direct impact damage by a massive 50%, and because of the way GLs split damage between impact and explosion, gives an overall damage increase of around 10%. That's basically like having Vorpal as a second damage perk, which is great. So it was definitely worth me continuing to farm for spike nades for an additional 14 resets in trials, rather than just stopping when I got my first envious bait and switch roll without spikes back in October, wasn't it? Wasn't it? Anyway, time to take a big sip of coffee and read This Week in Destiny from 15th February 2024. Oh, you mother f so, spike nades are going to be less essential on GLs, which is a good thing. I'll get to all the numbers later in the video on exactly how they'll compare pre and post patch. Spoilers, it's still the best GL and worth getting one. But first, why did I tell you that story at the start? My experience grinding for countless hours in the most demoralizing and least rewarding game mode in Destiny is hardly unique. But that's the problem, isn't it? The Trials play loop is so off-putting that you either engage in the grind and burn yourself out, or you don't bother in the first place. There's only a handful of us in my entire clan who even have a 2 out of 5 cataphract, let alone the 3 out of 5. But the point of this video is that Trials is about to become significantly more rewarding, even if you lose matches, so the grind for cataphract and other weapons will become much faster and more accessible to many more players, no matter how casual or how much they hate PvP. Yes, really. Trials is nine years old and has always suffered from low population. Better late than never, I suppose. Last week's This Week in Destiny article from 22nd February detailed a lot of upcoming PvP changes. Artifice armor will drop from competitive, three new maps, and refreshes to modes, matchmaking, sandbox, and rewards. Trials rewards specifically are changing up in a big way. Currently, you have four ways to earn rewards. Go flawless on a card to visit the lighthouse and receive an adept version of the rotating weekly weapon. Get seven wins on a card, even a flawed one, and each win you get after that while playing on the same card has a chance at receiving a Trials Engram post-match that you can focus. And you can also receive additional adepts this way if you've already been flawless that same weekend. Wins at any point in a card have a 50% chance of receiving a random Trials weapon directly. And finally, post-match Trials reputation, which gives you an engram on every rank up. You get more rep from wins, so if you lose a lot, these engrams will come slowly. So currently, receiving loot from Trials is almost entirely win-based, which is why the mode has been so off-putting for PvE-focused players, even if they would like the unique weapons on offer. 
There have been improvements made in recent years to increase player populations, such as changing from card-based matchmaking to random matchmaking, which organically mixes up the difficulty of opponents rather than knowing you're going to get stomped more often the longer you play, and fireteam-based matchmaking, which has made solo queuing more likely to match six solo players together rather than three solos facing a full pre-made squad, which used to happen almost every time and was just as miserable for the solos as you can imagine. But with update 7.3.5 coming on March 5th, Trials is going to get a lot more forgiving and rewarding. Passage of Ferocity is changing so that once you hit three wins, any loss after that point will just reset you back to three wins instead of flooring the card. Basically, you can go flawless by first chaining three wins together to hit the reset threshold, and then later chaining four wins together at any point, no matter how many losses you get in between both sets of wins, which makes it much more forgiving. A brand new Passage of Persistence is launching to give players a way to earn a weekly adept without needing to go flawless. After a win, if the next match is a loss, it will remove the previous win and floor the card, but it will only remove one loss before your next win, no matter how many losses you get. So essentially, any time you win two matches in a row, you lock in one win that cannot be removed. As you chain two or more wins together multiple times, eventually you will fill up the card and receive an adept. A card that has any wins removed doesn't count as flawless though, so you won't visit the lighthouse, you can't farm adepts from continuing on that 7 win card, and you won't be able to hand in the card with Saint-14 to focus an extra adept either, because that requires having been flawless that week. This might be a slow and steady card, but for players in lower skill brackets, it's the first time Bungie has ever made Trials adepts even remotely accessible to them. The 50% chance of a direct weapon drop on match win is also being changed from random to always being the same as the weekly weapon. So for example, when it's Cataphract Adept week, every time you get a weapon drop after a win, it will be a normal Cataphract. I'm a little torn on this one because I did like getting the occasional Cataphract as a random drop no matter what week it was, especially with Trials working on a nine week rotation if you factor in Iron Banner interruptions. But if you are able to play on those weekends, the drops are now going to be much more focused. Now, all these changes so far are very nice, but they're still win-based, and on their own, I don't think would change participation in Trials that much. Nice, fun, good game. But this next one is huge. In the section of the twid about matchmaking, Bungie acknowledges that fireteam matchmaking in Trials has negatively affected the population of teams queuing in a full squad of three. After all, in a game mode that almost exclusively requires wins to get any loot at all, why would anyone want to queue against stacked squads rather than solo or duo queue, where you're more likely to find balanced matches and occasionally win? Almost all of the 21 resets I did to get my Cataphract were solo queue for this very reason and what Bungie are doing to fix this problem is wild. As long as you queue into Trials in a full fire team of three, then on match completion, not win, even if you lose, you will get a 50% chance at a non-adept weekly weapon, and a 50% chance at a Trials engram, and additional Trials rep. Those are the same rewards you can expect from a win in the other queues, except even better because you don't have to reach seven wins on a card first for a chance at the engrams. You could never get a single win the whole time you were playing and still get significantly more cataphract drops than I did even on my best weekends of farming. You can't just jump off the map or AFK though, as that will prevent you getting rewards, so you might as well try to win and make progress on one of the quite forgiving ferocity or persistence cards while you're at it. I mean, there's really nothing to lose anymore. And as this should massively boost population from a greater range of skill brackets than we see currently, then winning and making progress on those cards will also become more likely. And if you don't have regular people to play with and hate the thought of using external LFG to form a full squad, that's not a problem anymore either since they launched Fireteam Finder. I was skeptical about it at first, but it actually works really well. I've even used it to run Platinum GMs successfully. 
I'm certain there will be countless players using it in trials after March 5th, if only to farm losses with no pressure. You can add tags to listings such as help needed, newbie friendly, or no experience necessary. You can leave out microphone or guardian rank requirements, so there's no reason not to try it, especially to get your hands on a god roll cataphract. Now, I promised I'd give you some data about how the damage numbers will change in the 7.3.5 patch from the details given in the February 15th TWID. I tested one shot of Cataphract with and without spike grenades at a variety of blast radiuses against the Chimera boss of Warlord's Ruin, with 1810 weapons, plus 20 artifact, tether, radiant, three strand surge mods, taken spec, and the solo operative artifact mod just to make the damage numbers as big as possible to minimize rounding errors later as I do maths with them. And remember, these are non-damage perk numbers for now. I'll mention bait and switch later as that is also changing. Heavy GLs split their damage between the direct impact and explosion, each displaying a separate damage number with the blast radius stat affecting the ratio of this split, but keeping total damage pretty much the same. Post-patch, explosion damage is being increased by 5% and impact damage is being increased by 10%. Spike grenades currently increase impact damage by 50%, which is being reduced down to 12.5%. The effect of spike grenades is always larger with a lower blast radius. Assuming you have spike grenades, 45 blast radius is the lowest you can go with the hard launch barrel, 50 is base, 60 is if you get unlucky and have to pick confined launch, and the highest you can make it is 75, with the volatile launch barrel and a blast radius masterwork fully upgraded. So I'm showing the numbers for those four to demonstrate the range. Post-patch, non-spike grenades sit halfway between a current spike and non-spike shot, and spike grenades will only give around 2.8% bonus damage at 50 blast radius, compared to 10.8% currently so they are definitely less impactful and more in line with something like impact casing on rockets. Nice to have, but not a deal breaker. And as Envious Assassin is also being nerfed with the patch, making it hard to load all your reserves in one go, maybe mini frags would be a better option to increase the starting magazine size, which as a knock-on effect should also increase reserves. And speaking of which, reserves are also being increased across the board. Bungie states by a minimum of 6 rounds, maximum of 10 rounds, depending on the grenade launcher. So we'll need to wait and see, but as we can currently hold 17 shots without reserve mods, that's a huge increase either way. Bait and switch is reducing from 35% to 30%, so by taking the test numbers I did earlier at 45 blast radius, damage of a single shot with spike grenades and bait and switch active will go from 154,411 down to 146,002, so around 95% of what it can do currently. As for total damage and DPS across the entire reserves, I'm afraid that will have to wait until the patch has actually dropped so we can see exactly how the Envious Assassin and reserve changes affect Cataphract specifically, as we'll need to manually reload at least once and also reproc bait and switch. So that's about all I've got for now. Cataphract is still going to be very good after the patch and importantly, much easier to farm. So I strongly believe anyone will be able to get it even if the thought of trials fills you with dread. We're also getting some big rocket changes and a refresh on Prophecy Dungeon weapons. So I plan to be back with another video once I've checked all that out in a couple of weeks. Thanks for watching. And if you like this video, please consider liking and subscribing. This is the best game ever made.